All right, folks. I want to welcome you to my cooking show tonight. I'm right here under the stars, folks. I'm cooking on my balcony here at my penthouse suite here at the Waldorf overlooking Times Square. And I realize there's a little, little bit of shadow right here because I, I got a light right over there and that's the shadow from the camera. Now, I'll give you a look around. Matter of fact, I'll put the footage in right now to show you what I'm working with. And I'm a one-man film crew, one-man production crew. I'm the fucking director, the head chef, the sous chef, the waiter, the bus boy, the whole nine yards. But it, it's a beautiful, beautiful night. We got a about a half moon, maybe, yeah, about a half, almost a half moon right there. It's a clear night here in the Philippines, folks, right outside Subic Bay, right on Subic Bay. Got the mountains over in the distance. Of course, you can't see that shit because it's about eight, nine o'clock at night. But anyhow, what I'm gonna do tonight is just make a little uh, chicken dish in my lodge, 3.2 quart uh, cast iron combo cooker. Shout out to the folks at Lodge over in uh, Tennessee, pumping these things out. Made in America. I picked mine up here off of Lazada in the Philippines. And it was actually $3 cheaper than ordering it from the Lodge manufacturing website in the U.S. Uh, it is legitimate. I talked to the company. They do have a, a distributor in uh, Manila. So check out their products on Lazada. Uh, Lodge Manufacturing. Great products. I've uh, been manufacturing this stuff since, what is it, 1896, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, enough of that. So what I've got, I've got the 3.2 quart combo cooker sitting on a brick model, B-R-I-K-K model, uh, on a brick model induction cooker. And you know, the induction cooker is light, fits in a small box, and on my Lodge cast iron skillet's heavy as hell. But if you just use a regular pot, this induction cooker is portable, it's lightweight, it, uh, you know, instant on, instant off. Great little piece of gear. It doesn't exactly get my Lodge cast iron combo cooker as hot as I want it. Um, I don't think I got a high enough wattage on the uh, on the induction cooker. But I'm still testing it out. Oh my goodness. But let me check the temperature on that. Oh baby, they give me a kiss, but that needs another 10 minutes in there. Put that thing back on the ice for about 10 minutes. Give me daddy a kiss over here. Mm, thanks for that beer, but put, put that thing back on the ice, honey. Now, folks, <clears throat> this is more than just a cooking show. I'm going to talk about, I haven't had a drink of beer, uh, any alcohol, in two and a half weeks. I think today's Thursday, so I'm, I'm going on three weeks. And... Uh, I'm gonna break that check ride tonight just by having me a couple Heinekens during this cooking show. Nothing crazy. I said going into 2020 that I was gonna change things up a bit, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, just just done with the drunkenness, the hanging out in the bars with the bar girls, and you know that that crazy scene. But I am a beer drinker, and over the past almost three weeks, I've had that conversation with my inner self. And it's, it's, not, it's not the fact that you have a couple beers with dinner or you have a couple beers while you're cooking. Um, you know, it's all the craziness and the extremes that usually I put with it. What I'm known for, what I've always been known for. But I said coming into this year, it was just time for a change. But I'm not going to give up uh, the taste of beer. I'm not going to give up the taste of wine occasional uh, Jack and Coke on a special occasion so I've got those Heineken's uh, a shout out to my friend she picked me up a case of Heineken when uh, they rolled over to a long so I got a whole case of Heineken in our uh, refrigerator and folks we actually have a proper refrigerator now it's like the first time in well I think the first time ever living in the Philippines, I guess, that I've had a proper refrigerator. And I'll give you a tour of that bad boy later. 
and you know, so little th simple things like that. Because I've been living such a transient lifestyle over here. We just went from coolers to small, tiny refs. Now we got a no shit refrigerator, and I got the whole case of Heineken cooling down. Um, so welcome to my channel. Without further ado, uh, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and, uh, now folks, I'm, it's, it's kind of hard to get the right angle. And I know you're not going to be able to see this exactly, but I wanted to put myself in the frame and I think you can sort of see that there, but I'm not working with the wide angle lens. I'm, I'm shooting on my big Sony camera. Uh, 4K at 24 frames if anybody's interested in the photography end of it but it doesn't have a wide angle lens like the GoPro so you just got to deal with it and I'm sitting up on the balcony balcony in my penthouse you might hear some tricycles drive by some music hey that's just uh, added in there for free so I'll pop this lid off of here now basically the lid on this cast iron combo cooker serves as another pan and you put it down on the top of this thing you know you can put coals on the top if you're cooking over charcoal or outside and it becomes a dutch oven this is a great piece of gear i think it's uh i'm pretty sure it's uh 68 bucks i don't even know where to set this guy i'll just set it right here lean it up against the bamboo I think it's around 68 bucks on Lodge's website, and I believe I got it for 65. Now she's already had, she's already put some oil in here, so I'm just gonna spin this around so I can get a grip on it. And I'm using the one glove technique because if I have to touch this camera, I gotta have one clean hand without grease, so I can manipulate <laughs> what I need to do. And I got one hand right here uh, with the grease. All right, so what I'm going to do, hit the power. Shit, I guess I better take a closer look. I think that is the on-off. Okay, I'm going to push it a little harder. It's a touch screen. And i got to go with the function. There we go. Looking at this thing upside down. So I turn it on, hit the function. <clears throat> I take this thing up to about 100. We're outdoors. So I'm not worried about it, you know, fuming up the, the penthouse in here. <clears throat> and that thing is hot pretty much immediately. And folks, what I, you know me, what I, what I like to do if you watch any of my cooking shows, I throw the meat on there first and I cook all my wheat, uh, all the meat well done. I just let that thing fire up. Boom. In goes the chicken and there ain't no... There ain't no rocket science to throwing this chicken on there. And I got this thing on 120. Again, with a little bit of grease. Let's let's take this thing up and see what we're working with. If we take it up to about 160. Let's see if we can't get this chicken to, uh, to brown up real quick. I think one of the other things that is a, a factor in cooking with this induction cooker is that folks here in the Philippines the, the power grid is not as reliable as a lot of places well let's say it. it's not as reliable as the grid in the US in the West or even in Thailand here we have occasional brownouts uh, the uh, the voltage or the amps, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a fucking electrician, electrician, if you need to figure that out. But the electricity is not stable like it is in most places. And I think that has a factor, that is a big factor on this induction cooker. And I think, I mean, it's also hard to gauge the walk. Um, you know, if you watch the lights, I mean, every now and then they're dimming, they're up. So part, part of it is the power grid. And I'm over on the Subic side, and from what I've been told, like we have a lot of brownouts when the Barrio Barreto side of the river does not. And somebody said, well, you're on Subic, the Subic side of power. I don't know if that's true or not, but a lot of times when I'm, I had a brownout over at the Alamo, I would talk to my buddy in Barrio Barreto, and he's like, no, there's no brownout over here, man. All right, so this is 160. Let me take this guy up to 180. And just get that chicken going. 
you know, with a little bit of oil and the, the natural juices of the chicken, we get that chicken going right there. And I hope you guys can see that. Uh, maybe, I think you can see part of it. <laughs> but you know, like I said, once I get a film crew, they realize the value of this little authentic travel and cooking show. Yeah, so anyhow, um, still a, still basically in the in the learning phases of learning how to cook with the induction cooker. Now, if, if I put this uh, cast iron combo cooker on the grill or over some coals, all right, I, I know how to cook on the damn thing. I know how to cook if I put it on the stove. I can regulate the temp. This thing, I'm just still learning. Still a learning curve. But basically, get this chicken going here. I hope you guys can see that. I think so. I'm like trying to look. It's in the corner where my audio levels are. And if you ever try to make a YouTube video by yourself, you know where I'm coming from. So many things to set up. People, people think that we, as you know doing YouTube or um, you know creating our own projects independent filmmakers you think it's a it's a vacation it's not a vacation folks this is work and when you when you don't have any background or education in filmmaking it's certainly a challenge everything you do all right so while that's that's getting going there um, Again, I'm shooting on a Sony FDR AX100. It's an old camcorder. Like, shit, it's like five or six years old. This thing is a champion. Once you figure out the autofocus, um, it's a champion. And I'm using a uh, little uh, lavalier mic. I'll put those links down in the description. This little lavalier mic works great. And I've also got a Sennheiser ME2 uh, that's a great piece of gear as well, but for some reason this This little mic that I'm using it just kind of a little bit better quality than the, than the other one I don't think you can tell the difference But I can because I'm constantly listening to it All right now that I got that chicken going I'm just gonna come over here with the vegetables and basically I got tomatoes Okra onions and garlic. I'm just gonna pop it in there. There we go. There you go, folks. And if you're wondering how much that is, well, that's a uh, Mickey Mouse plate full of vegetables. It's going in this pot. So is this a stir fry? No, it's not a stir fry. It's not gonna be a stir fry. If I wanted to do stir fry, I'd need to uh, bust out the wok which will get really hot, hot enough to do stir fry. This thing here is more of a marathon runner. So at the end, I'll kind of tell you what I'm, what I'm gonna call this thing. You can decide for yourself what you wanna call it, but you know, it's not rocket science. All I'm doing is cooking some chicken and some vegetables and a little bit of oil and the natural juices just to kind of get it going now folks now what I'm gonna do and you may say why is he doing that I'm just gonna go ahead and pop some water in there and this is what we use uh, for our diaper bag because like when you're on a bus you don't if you have a regular water bottle you tend to crush shit the water goes everywhere so like having this hard uh, uh, canister here and this isn't this isn't by Yeti I mean obviously got a bunch of Yeti products but this is by therm what is that thermo thermo flask and it keeps the water cold if you if you need it to but we use this because it's it's great at making bottles when you're on a bus or a plane because if you put this between your you know regular water bottle between your legs or you try to grip it a lot of times you just squeeze it and the water comes out and this one obviously you don't do that all right so I'm just gonna add some water in there like I'm making soup and that's about 
half a thermo flask full of water if you're wanting to know the directions and I'm gonna hit it just a little bit of pepper I think that's a little bit and we don't for whatever reason we don't have a damn salt shaker all we got is this thing right here full of salt so I gotta take it right there oh, oh shit that's too much just throw a little salt to it shit I just used my damn good hand now if I got to uh, <coughs> change the focus or anything got to get salt all in the damn Sony shit happens folks and the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, this all the butter I got but you know a lot of times I just I just use what ingredients are available I go out and I buy stuff and I always forget things uh, and I just end up using what what's on hand what's available All right, so I put that stick of butter in there a little bit of salt and pepper And we'll just get this thing going to a boil Get that butter stirred around And what I'm gonna do Let, let that come to a boil and I'm gonna cut it down and just throw the lid on it I'm gonna let that shit sit there and simmer for a while and I'm gonna let it cook. And while that's cooking, I'll just talk about this uh, almost the last three weeks of, of being off the booze on my little check ride. And if you're new to my channel, you know, you can go back through dozens of videos where I talk about, you know, if you're a hard drinker or you drink every day every now and then you need to you need to stop cold turkey and a lot of times most of the time when I do this it's because I had a bad night or I had a bad run you know did something stupid got too drunk at the club got thrown out of a bar pissed somebody off I mean for whatever reason you wake up the next day and you're so hungover you can't function you lose a day you can't remember what you did People are sending you messages saying, holy shit, man, I can't believe what you did. It's funny as hell. You know, you know how it is. It's, uh, you know, my life, many a night, I've woken up, me and my friends, worse than that movie to Hangover. You know, pick, pick one. Part one, two, three, or 18, whatever they're up to. Because that's the way we've lived our lives. But when I have one of those nights, you wake up the next day, can't recover, then the day after, usually it's like, fuck it, it's time for a check ride. It's time to make sure that I'm in control, put things in perspective, try to get some of the, the hard work done that requires sobriety. You know what I'm talking about, like filling out paperwork, looking at spreadsheets, all, all that crap that you really can't do when you're drinking. And just make sure that you're in control. Make sure that you're in control and not the booze. And, you know, I'm one of the lucky ones where I can turn it on and turn it off at my will. Damn, pepper went up my nose. Um, yeah, so, a couple Sundays ago, almost three Sundays ago, I watched UFC all day few hours later hit a Christmas party and just you know just got too drunk decided I needed to turn it off and that's what I did I recommend you do the same if you're a hard drinker and I was talking to my buddy today ran into him uh, in Barrio Barreto he was saying that one time he quit for six years it was the most boring six years of his life I got it uh, past three weeks no, I'm not talking about hanging out with my kids and my family. I love that part of my life. Um, but as far as like the creativity, and I'm just adding the rest of that water. The, the creative side of me disappears when the alcohol disappears. And that's just the way it is. I talked on that live stream about like if I were trying to explain sobriety to a photographer or to a videographer, not a photographer. If I was tr trying to explain it to a videographer, I'm gonna cut this down to uh, 100. 
and I'm gonna take that big Mac Daddy lid right there and I'm gonna slap it down on there. I might even take it down to 80. All right, I put it on 80. I'm gonna let that thing simmer. So while it's simmering, we'll just have a conversation. Um, anyhow, ex explaining sobriety to a videographer, and this is what I would say. When I am stone cold sober, it's like I'm looking at everything in life in 60 frames. A frame rate of 60 frames. And that's like the look you get if you're playing a video game or watching maybe a sports cast. It's very clear. A lot of my videos in the past I've shot in 60 frames. But movies, in contrast, most movies are shot at, tw at a frame rate of 24 frames. It gives you that movie effect. There's motion blur. Everything is not crystal clear. But what it forces your brain to do is fill in the blanks. It fills in the gaps. And so pretty much every movie that, that we've ever seen is shot in 24 frames. Uh, the Hobbit was shot, at, I think, at 48 frames. And, you know, it looks different. I uh, bought a new TV and it had this true motion shit on there where it takes all every, every video, even if it's a 24 frame movie, and like fills it in and it gives it that soap opera effect. That 30 frame or that 60 frame effect. I turn that shit off. It just looks fake to me. So that's kind of the way it is for me. When I'm stone cold sober, it's like I'm looking through life shooting through a video camera that's on a 60 60 frame per second timeline and I'd rather live in 24 frames in the movies you know the creative frame rate that look you know the motion blur the imperfections and that's what a little bit of alcohol does for me it helps me um, be creative and I wrote you may not know this about me, but I, I wrote two books. I started uh, a couple more, actually, different phases. And I'm not in the right. Don't ask me when they'll be finished, because I'm not in the writing mood these days. Writing a book will take everything out of you. Uh, editing a book will take even more out of you. And so anybody that has written a book uh, that really you know, put some effort into it, put their heart and soul into it. They're, they're mentally fucking exhausted after they're done. <laughs> and so the amount of work and the time that it took getting my two books put together, uh, you know, I'm just not in a big hurry to jump back into number three, number four. But when I wrote those books, uh, the first book I wrote, I was, uh, I got up in the morning and started drinking rum. And my fingers would just fucking go to work from the time I got up until like one or two. And me and the old lady would call it a day. My, uh, my Thai wife at the time. And that's how I wrote that book. Once I got a few, few, uh, rum and cokes on board, rum and pineapple juice, what have you, these little guys just went to work. It was like I was on autopilot. I didn't even have to think about it. It's just like the creativity just flowed from my brain to my fingers. And then I had, you know, 20 pages written. Whereas, had I not been drinking rum, I'd be staring at the fucking screen trying to figure out which way to go. How to categorize shit. How to, where do I start? What? But, uh, the rum just took away all those inhibitions and all those indecisions and just fucking lets the creativity flow when it comes to writing. Now on these videos, I guess pretty much any type of alcohol helps me out with creativity and just saying stupid shit to entertain the masses, but uh, when it comes to creative writing, it's rum. So yeah, for the past three weeks, um, looking through my eyes, life has been too clear. Too clear, <clears throat> too clear to the point that I'm not very creative and I'm bored. And that's, that's just my opinion about it. 
So as soon as she gets these Heineken's properly iced down, I'm gonna pop the top on a Heineken here in front of the camera while I'm cooking this uh, chicken noodle soup concoction. And I just thought I'd share that with you about uh, about my check ride and how things go. Um, as far as the physical effects, like every time I stop, sort of different effects. Like for the first week, I was having these very vivid dreams. Like just all night long. Not nightmares, not great, just fucking dreaming all night long. And then it slowly subsided and went back to normal. So, no huge physical effects a little bit of lack of energy because when you wake up and hit a beer that's a hundred something calories a couple hundred calories an hour later you hit another beer um, so you know I'm riding that caloric slash carbohydrate energy train on the beer oh yeah that's boiling now at 140 so let me take it down to 100 because I just want a slow boil on this I'm not in no big hurry Now the old lady might be in a big hurry, but and the thing about her is she's probably already forgotten about my beer. She tried to bring it out here once, but if she lays down on the couch, she's gonna pass out of sleep. And if I don't try to get a hold of her, that beer is gonna freeze up in the freezing unit. <clears throat> it's gonna break, <clears throat> and I don't want my first first Heineken uh, after three weeks of sobriety to break in the freezer. I mean, my first beer, 2020. Stone cold sober on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, not one drink. But one thing I have resolved this year is not to drink cheap liquor. And yes, that includes uh, SMB, San Miguel, Pale Pilsen, the fucking cheap beer. San Miguel Light is a cheap beer. I'm not saying they're bad beer, but you get what you pay for. I'm not drinking those cheap beers. I'm not drinking Tandawai. I'm not drinking in any of that local cheap rot gut crap. My go-to beer is gonna be Heineken. Nice middle of the road. And there's my boy. Hey, sweet boy. Now, folks, let's see if the temperature on this one is appropriate. Does it have ice hanging off of it? Um. Not exactly, but I think it's cold enough. We're gonna go with this one. And baby, don't stand next to the uh, the pot there with, with my boy. All right, thank you very much, honey. Thank you, Forrest G, for bringing me the beer. Yeah, I love you too. Okay, all right, well, I'm gonna have some food for him in a few minutes. Let him eat before he goes to bed, honey. Love you, sweet boy. Did, did he eat already? You didn't feed him Papa's food, though. He's ready to come, but we feed him. Folks. All right, so here we go. I'll pop the top on this first Heineken of 2020. Cheers. Happy New Year to everyone. Shit, drop my cigar. So, uh, cheers and Happy New Year. Ooh, that's a rolling boil now. Let me drop that down. Drop that down to 60. That thing's gonna start. Now that's funny. The minute you drop that temp down, it just stops. That's how the induction works. Cause it's either it's the heat's there, or it's gone. Cheers, my friend. My friends, happy new year, 2020. Oh my god, that's delicious. Mmm. I love me some Heineken. That taste, the taste of Heineken is absolutely delicious. And that's cold. That That's great temperature. A couple more degrees down, it'd be perfect. Well, I'm not complaining. Bring it in the new year. Now the day's the second or the third. What the hell is the day? I think it's the second. I'm a little late to the party, but damn, that tastes delicious. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Why have I been depriving myself? Why do I occasionally deprive myself like that? Alright, so when you put that bad boy down on 60, it stops boiling. 100, it's a rolling boil. 60, there's no boil. And I bought these noodles here at the Sorry Sorry store. And they obviously take them out of a bigger bag and repack them. But they actually look pretty decent. And obviously you're going to get a better price, you know, when you buy things like this. So I, uh, I just looked at them and I was like, hell, they look, they look fine to me. Let me see if I can get this damn plastic over here without breaking the whole damn thing open. <clears throat> a little bit difficult to do with these gloves on. Alright, I'm trying not to get any plastic in the mix. So we'll see. So I just take these noodles. And I said it's going to be chicken chicken noodle soup. That's pretty much what it's going to be. There we go. Oh shit, that got hot on me. Throw that over there. Let me get a rag. Because uh, this lid is hot now. We just stir this, stir the noodles in here. So we've got plenty of water. Nothing's gonna stick, nothing's gonna burn. All right, and we know 100's a rolling boil. I'll take it to 80. And we'll check that bad boy just shortly after I finish this Heineken. Mm. Oh yeah. Now the good thing about this induction cooker. Okay. Now say I'm cooking with a wok. If I'm cooking with that wok, folk, there's damn smoke boiling off of that thing. I mean, we used to have that condo in Angeles City. And I'd get drunk and I'd fire up that wok. And folks. I would smoke up that condo, and if I threw some peppers in there, it literally run the Filipinas out of the room. And that's the nature of a wok, you know, cooking like that. With this dude right here, this is slow and steady wins the race. It's gonna take you a little bit longer um, cooking with this thing and the type type of dishes that that at least I'm I've been making with it, but it doesn't off gas and fumigate the whole damn place. Uh, just a little bit of steam coming off this particular dish. But if you're in a hotel room or you're in a condo, you know, small room, wherever, where you really can't have a, a big ass cooking operation, this little induction cooker is a champ. And it's working out, you know, great for us. Now I'm sitting outside here because it's a damn beautiful night. I'm underneath the moon. It's cool out here. Uh, you know, why would I want to be in there? But for traveling, if you're looking for something uh, to cook in a hotel room or something like that, an induction cooker is the way to go. Definitely the way to go. And what I've noticed is, like, if you take a hot plate and you keep that thing plugged in for a long time, that damn cord is so hot, it feels like it's about to melt, right? The cord on this induction cooker is not hot. It doesn't get hot like a, a traditional uh, heating element. You just hear that little fan running. That's supposed to be a lot more energy efficient. We'll see when the electric bill comes in. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, so New Year's Eve, I planned on walking around Barrio Barreto, but it ended up just watching the action down here at Times Square from a penthouse here. And I was talking to my buddy today and he said that he went out New Year's Eve and a lot of the bars were closed. I was like, closed? Fucking New Year's Eve? He's like, yeah, a lot of the bars were closed. He said he went to Rosie's, they were open, then he ended up in Alongapo. Then he came back, uh, where'd he go? Back by the Nido and somebody was having a house party. So uh, it sounded like it was a little bit uneventful there in Barrio Barreto. I don't know. I didn't go out, but I experienced one of the loudest New Year's Eve I've ever experienced 
right here listening listening to the noise at Times Square. <laughs> we discussed that today during our walk. You'll see it on that video if you watched it, but if you didn't, <clears throat> the old lady in face said that basically a lot of Filipino folk believe that the louder you are on New Year's Eve, the more blessings that will come your way in the following year. You know, blessings, money, good luck, what have you. And I said, well, what are you, you're scaring away the Oswongs? And I don't know, they, they really didn't explain it that in depth, but they basically said there's a correlation with the amount of noise you make and the amount, well, it, 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 it correlates with the amount of good luck that you're supposed to have the following year. So there are reason, there's a reason behind it, a superstition behind it. They're not just partying and making noise to make noise. It's part of the culture and superstition about having good luck next year. Damn, I gotta quit grabbing that because them gloves right there, these are good hardy, uh, heavy duty gloves. But that damn, the top is so hot now I can't grab it with the glove. I gotta get that rag or use uh, Mr. Muppet here and this thing is a champ shout out to my mom she sent this to us and it's some type of I don't know what the material is but it's an oven mitt but I always use it with the kids you know because it looks like baby shark not that I'm a big fan of baby shark but it looks like a damn shark so I'm always playing playing with them as a puppet but it uh it keep your damn hands from getting burnt during the barbecue. Yeah, folks. So uh, I'm gonna give this about five more minutes. And what I like to do is, you know, let it sit there and just kind of cool down in the pan, let it thicken up. And the only thing that I gotta add to it, I don't see that it made it out here. Shit, that's a problem. I got a, uh, a thing of cream, heavy cream. So what I do with these soups is, is I'm making chicken noodle soup. Who the hell stole my cream? I can be sitting on it. I'm about to call the old lady tell her to bring it out. But what I like to do with these, these chicken noodle soups and stuff like this that I make is throw in a thing of heavy cream and then it makes it sort of like a combination uh, between cream of chicken soup and chicken noodle soup. It makes it a creamy chicken noodle soup. Just by adding, just by adding that, uh, that one thing of heavy cream. So let me call the old lady here, tell her to, uh, tell her, tell her to track down that heavy cream. If she's not sleeping. Yes. Baby, check the check the area. I'm missing my cream, my heavy cream. It's a little box. Of, it's a little box of cream, and also check the temperature on that second Heineken in the uh, freezer, please. Okay. And if it's the appropriate temp, go ahead and bring that one on out with the cream. All right. Hey, and bring the bring the scissors too, so I can open up the heavy cream. Okay. All right, baby. How much do you love me? What? Okay, baby. All right, kiss, kiss. I have no idea what she just said, but that's a lot of my day. <laughs> These Filipinas folks, they, uh, they're wonderful, yet they stress me out and make me laugh at the same time. I think most American chicks, they just fucking stress you out, but these chicks here at the same time they're stressing me they're making my ass laugh it's so damn funny my friends I want to thank you guys for joining me on this little cooking show and look at there at a hundred oh shit I forgot let me put baby shark on here oh. did you bring the scissors to open it <laughs> baby I just told you to bring the scissors she brings the milk, she brings the milk and hands it to me. I just told her to bring the scissors, you're my witness. So, uh, 
All right, so I got baby shark on here. Now I'm feeling no pain. And just stir this around a bit. Oh, yeah, and them noodles. Almost done. And then I'm going to pour in this thing of cream. And still got plenty of water in there. Nothing's going to stick. All right, so let me... Baby shark do 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 <laughs> He's just laughing over here. Baby. Now listen, I, I need you. Well, you got the baby. So folks, I gotta try to cut this off. Maybe I'll take off baby shark. That's what I need to do. Shit, almost cut my microphone cord. I think what I'll do is just go ahead and kill the power. You got the beautiful Fatima. Baby, walk over there in the background so everybody can see you in Force G. The Force G's uh, rocking nothing but a diaper. Okay, all right, too close on my operation. Sorry, folks, I'm just gonna throw in a, throw in a thing of cream. Try to cut this without cutting my microphone cord. That was a, that was a crazy move. I mean, I literally almost cut that cord. Oh shit, on a $200 microphone. All right, see if we can get. Oh shit! Get baby shark back on here. Baby shark. Baby shark. All right, so Force G likes baby shark. He doesn't watch baby shark itself, but it's on his cocoa melon. All right, folks. So I just take that one thing of cream. Pour that bad boy in there. The thing about these lodge folks, they are heavy. I just take that cream, put the cream in there, stir that cream around, just like that. Now look at that. Now you're looking at a totally different dish. Yeah, bring it on, baby. And so I will, I will cut this back on until function, function, function. Cut it on, function. What the hell we do? Thermal shutdown? There we go. Okay, so I'll cut that on 80 for just a minute since I added the cream. Get the scissors out of here so I don't cut my damn microphone cord. And there you go, folks. That's how, that's how I make a creamy chicken noodle soup you can't call it cream of chicken soup it's not that thick it's like a chicken noodle soup but creamy just by adding the butter and the box of cream and she's bringing me Heineken number two in here double trouble double barrel my friends mm. oh my god this is delicious I want to give a shout out to the folks over at Heineken um, Heineken is one of those beers like say say you're in the Philippines most places you go local you can only get Sam Big, Sam Big Light, Red Horse the cheap beers and occasionally you'll go to a place and they serve Heineken uh, Cheap Charlie's here in Barrio Barreto unless they've changed it up they got uh, Heineken on draft you'll find places with Heineken on draft in Thailand, you know, it's a bigger selection pretty much everywhere you go. But if you're out in the province, you got all the Thai beers, the local beers, which, you know, Singhai is a great beer. That's not in the same class as San Miguel, Pale Pilsen, or San Big Light. They're, they're down here on the cheap beer. Singhai is way up here. So I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that you can usually find a Heineken. And the Heineken is your middle of the road, upper middle class. Um, I hate to say upper middle class because you you can drink a Heineken with any setting. You know, you can drink a Heineken at a redneck party, I think, and not and people don't look at you like you're too snooty. Or you can drink a Heineken on a super yacht and people don't look at you like you're broke. This this is the most versatile beer 
in the world is Heineken. I mean, the best all-around award has to go to Heineken. You know, if it were a gymnastics meet, uh, you know, with six events for the men, four events for the women, um, this would take the all-around. That's what I think. Mm. So shout out to the folks at Heineken for bringing this product world round. <clears throat> Even when I was in uh, Afghanistan. Okay, occasionally we can get Heineken. Most of the time we come up with Tuborg. Tuborg was a great beer. But since I left Afghanistan, I've only seen it on a couple of occasions. But we could get two Borg, Heineken. <laughs> um, anyhow, shout out to Heineken. Even even in the deserts, the, the desert safari in Abu Dhabi. I walked over there and boom, they got an ice cold Heineken behind the bar. Alright folks, time to kill this. Turn this bad boy off. And let me give you a look at the final products. I think you guys have listened to me long enough. But check that out right there. There's your final product. Creamy. A creamy chicken noodle soup. And I've made enough for two meals. She and I will eat this tonight. We'll have this for breakfast. Uh, the baby loves it. Um, healthy. It's basically... Hell, it's, it's nothing but chicken and vegetables with a little butter and and uh, a thing of cream. How can you go wrong with that? And this is a dish, like I said, you can cook this dish. Okay, say, say you're a business traveler or say you're TDY somewhere and you're holed up in a, in a damn hotel room. You know, with the Hilton, the Marriott, the fucking Embassy Suites wherever you're at and yeah you're probably you know if you're government type you're living off per diem if you're working for a big company you're getting a food allowance what have you whatever they call it at some point folks it gets fucking old having to go out to eat three days three times a day or two times a day that shit gets old believe it or not if you've never lived that lifestyle living in hotels uh, for for months it gets fucking old having to go out uh, and all of a sudden like a pack of fucking ramen noodles in your hotel room is just like comfort food you're sitting there you know making a a pack of ramen noodles and a uh, on a little hot plate or something watching your favorite TV show or movie you don't have to go out and wait at the fucking restaurant and tip and be sociable and blah blah this is a great dish that if you're in that situation, you can make in your hotel room. Nobody's going to complain. If you can crack a window a little bit where the, uh, there's no smoke, there's no fumes. It's, if anybody smells this, all they smell is deliciousness. It's not like you, uh, you know, you got fucking uh, durian or you're cooking fish or this alamong nasty, purple nasty shit they like to eat. This right here, if anybody smells this, they're not gonna complain, because it's a wonderful smell. Who the hell doesn't like chicken soup? Yeah, so try it out. And if you got this little induction cooker in a pot, that shit'll fit in your suitcase, it's light. And as far as the, the fire risk, like, you know, say if you got a hot plate and that some bitch falls off, catch the carpet on fire. Well, this induction cooker, it's not, don't work like that. Like, if I took that off right now, it's still hot, but it's not hot enough to catch anything on fire. It's warm, but it's it's not, the, the induction cooker itself is not a, a fire hazard. Well, folks, that's enough. I've said enough, I think, during this video. I hope the audio is okay, because I had to change, I had the camera set on automatic, because I was just doing some handheld stuff. And then when I plug this uh, external mic in, you need to set the level at manual. If you leave it on automatic, it's always screwed up. Um, 
So I hope the audio level's okay. But thanks for joining me. If you're not a subscriber, the bottom right hand corner of your screen, just hit that overstay road sign, get on board with my channel. Food, beer, visas. I always say a lot of bad behavior, but I'm kind of toning that down because these days my my only priority is to spend time with my kids. And I'm not saying that I won't go out and get in trouble tonight or tomorrow. It's in my nature. But the thing that motivates me these days is just, just spending time with, with my babies and cooking and laughing with wife number one and um, the rest of my crew here in Barrio Barreto. So I want to say thank you. Peace out. Hope you're having a great day wherever you're at in the world, my friends. And I'll see you on the next one.